In this module, we'll cover the molding window analysis. Our goal for this module will be to find optimum molding conditions in a wide processing window. Why? Having optimal molding conditions is a great start for setting up your process. A wide processing window also creates a stable process. This is a preliminary analysis. At this point, you may have already run your design advisor analysis and gate location analysis. However, this takes that a step further. This will aid in our material selection, the number and location of gates, so it will expand upon the gate location results that we received, and determine the part thickness. It also helps us determine a molding window and optimum processing conditions based upon the following. The full range of mold melt temperatures, pressure limit, and a temperature drop through the part. The benefits of a molding window analysis is it allows you to take a look at the big picture of molding a part. It's very, very quick to run and gives you a great starting point for further analyses. There are a few simple steps you will need to accomplish in order to run a molding window analysis. Step one would be to open or copy your study. Then you would set your injection location or locations. Hopefully this was based on either your design decisions or your gate location analysis. Then you'll select the molding window as your analysis sequence. You'll select a material, but you can analyze multiple materials at the same time in this module if you wish. You specify your process settings, run the analysis, and finally review your results. Once your analysis is completed, you should see your summary panel appear. This is located at the bottom of your user interface. This summary panel will display the optimum points that we would recommend for a mold temperature, a melt temperature, and an injection time. You should always look in this window at the very bottom also to see if there are any solver warnings. So after reviewing your summary pane, we'll come and take a look at your 2D slice plot. The 2D slice plot is basically defining the size or showing you the size of your molding window. The size of your molding window will largely be dependent on the number and location of your gates, your part geometry, as well as the material you've selected. In this image, you can see we have a green band as well as some yellow bands. Typically, we want that green band, the preferred molding region, to be as broad as possible or as thick as possible. This means we have quite a bit of room to deviate in our process settings. If this is very narrow, then we may need to reevaluate our material selection, our gating location or number of gates, or possibly look at our optimizing our part geometry. When reviewing this plot, we typically set the cut axis to mold temperature. It's not required, but it's recommended. And again, the goal is to have a large green area or a very large processing window. So a 2D slice plot is essentially a three axes graph. So we have mold temperature along one axis, melt temp along another axis, and our injection time along a third axis. So you think this is kind of a cube basically. What we're doing is we're going to slice this along an axis, so our mold temperature. By to slice it, you simply click that button next to that result. Again, we recommend slicing it on the mold temperature, but it is not necessarily required. You can use these sliders after you do that to change the conditions and update the molding window right on the fly. If you want to see what your optimum conditions that we determine for you will give you in the way of a processing window, just click the button that says optimum point and it will automatically update your mold, melt, and injection times to reflect what we determine would be the optimum points. From there you can investigate further to see if there's anything else you want to use and what your other options may be. If you decide to use the conditions, then you just click the button that says use conditions and that will copy the selected conditions into a new analysis so you can start off and run your fill analysis right from there. Now I mentioned in the beginning of the presentation that you could compare multiple materials at one time. So the way you do this is you open up your analysis wizard and on the molding window tab you can see along the top there are multiple materials that you can drop into there. You can also specify a required surface finish 
so whether a high gloss, gloss, or low gloss. If you specify a high gloss, the solver will typically be biased to a little higher mold temperature. If you pick a lower gloss, then it will choose a slightly lower mold temperature because that's what happens in reality. Typically, higher mold surface temps give you a higher gloss surface finish. So, once you have your material selected, you run the analysis, and you can see that we do a comparison in the summary pane between the two materials, the two optimum conditions, as well as we give results in 2D slice plots for each material. From there, you can do a simple split that you learned in the user interface section or tile to take a look at both of those analyses side by side. Maybe you're looking at two grades of ABS, a high flow and a low flow. Well, here you go. You can see if one has a lower process, smaller processing window over the other, and that can help you make your decision. So to summarize what we've covered in this presentation, maybe we'll end it with a quick example of how you can use the molding window analysis. We have four design scenarios in this case. So the original design is a single gate. It's in the top left corner there. You can see the 2D slice plot. There is no preferred region. So not really a preferred molding condition is available for that setup. So what we did was we added another gate. You can see we have a small molding window now or a optimum processing area, but still not ideal. So then we increase the thicknesses and you can see we now have a larger window, which is good to see. That's what we want to see. Then we try to lower viscosity material and that can fill the part, doesn't quite have a wide processing window, so in this case our optimum solution would be to increase the thickness of our part. The molding window analysis will aid in which of the following? The molding window analysis will recommend which of the following process conditions when it has completed. When reviewing the 2D slice plot, what do we recommend that you set your cut axis to? What is the main goal when running the molding window analysis and reviewing your 2D slice plot? The green area in the 2D slice plot is defining the preferred processing window, true or false. And let's browse to the folder where the molding window project exists. In order to open this, we'll simply use the open project button from the get started tab in the ribbon. Again, browse to the Autodesk Learning, Autodesk Mold Flow, Molding Window, and open up the mw.mpa project file. Let's start by opening the saw housing and setting the injection location. To open the saw housing, simply double click on the study inside of the project view. Now rotate the model so we can view the back side. Again, using the navigation tools on the right side of the screen, rotate so I can see the back ribbing structure on the model. With the rib structure exposed, from the Home tab, select the Injection Locations button in the ribbon, and select an injection location on the middle rib underneath the cutouts on the model. With the injection location specified, we now want to put it into an exact location on the particular model. In order to do this, simply right click anywhere in the view screen and go to Properties. With the injection location highlighted in the highlight pink color, we can now specify the three-dimensional coordinates in which the injection location should reside. In the X direction, set the number to minus 93 0.97 millimeters. In the y direction, set it to 174.84 millimeters. And in the z, set it to minus 226.91. And press apply. You notice the injection location has shifted to its new coordinates and is ready for an analysis. With the injection location in its new coordinate, select Close 
and go back to the tasks view in your project pane. We now simply need to set up the analysis and launch it so that we can take a look at the results. From the Home tab, let's take a look at the Process Settings Wizard. You'll notice that the Process Settings Wizard exists inside of the Mold Window Process section. By selecting the Process Settings Wizard, you'll notice that the process already has some setup primary conditions. Under the Analysis Sequence tab, let's uncheck the Gate Location Analysis and select to run a Molding Window Analysis. With the Molding Window Analysis now specified, simply click Analyze. This will allow our analysis to start, and again we can see the process taking place in the lower left hand corner in the process bar. With the analysis complete, we can now take a look at the summary window as well as the results that we've got from the molding window analysis. Again, the general tab showing us our initial setup conditions, and the molding window tab showing us some brief information about the material that we've now selected. We can also now view the zone plot for the particular material that we've selected for this part. In this case, by simply varying some of the conditions, like the mold temperature and the injection speed, we can see how we move around on the existing plot. By moving the melt temperature, we can see how the processing zone varies by moving the temperature. We can also set the plot to control specific mold temperatures or injection speeds and vary these as needed in order to find optimal melt and mold conditions. We can also find our optimal point by using the optimal point button and selecting our cut through views as each one of the primary views. Remember that the view that you have is essentially a 2D slice of a three-dimensional cube cutting at the particular temperature, in this case melt temperature, that has been specified. In order to find specific information, the window can also be queried on, showing the crosshairs moving dynamically simply by holding your left mouse button down and moving around on the screen. For more detailed information, use the Results tab, you can use the Results Advisor, and select specific locations giving me injection speed and mold temperature at the specific melt temperature. You'll also notice that the results advisor gives detailed advice about the specific location we have highlighted, noting any problems in the yellow or red areas. The molding window result, much like other advisor-based results using simple colors like green, yellow, and red, allows us to query on yellow and red locations to find out why we're outside of the ideal zone for injection molding. The results advisor again becomes a useful way for determining optimal conditions for injection molding. The molding window can also be used to find the range available for injection molding a particular part, simply by querying on the specific locations and taking a look either at the properties window underneath the tools tab or by actually querying on the locations right inside of the interface. This gives us not only the flexibility to see what the available processing conditions are, but also allows us to compare processing conditions between multiple parts to determine if a family tool is capable of being used. Again, when looking for optimal points, the optimal point button does exist, and use conditions is also an option. So when processing conditions are determined, you can use those conditions right from the molding window analysis in your filling or filling, packing, and warping analysis. The molding window can not only be used for comparisons between multiple parts and different materials, it can also be used to test different layouts of gating and part design to determine best fit for a particular scenario. In this case, let's take the saw housing that we're currently looking at and let's duplicate it. Much like we would have done before, we can actually right click on the study name and say duplicate. This will create an exact copy of the model we've already created. 
In this case, let's change the name on the study to be saw housing underscore MWE NDGATE. So now we're going to change the gating scenario to take a look at an end gate. By simply double clicking on this study, we can now open this up, rotate the view, and take a look at the model. By looking at this particular model, we may just simply want to move the injection location, delete the injection location away, or add an injection location. In this case, we're going to take the injection location and we're going to modify its position. We can do that either by highlighting it, right clicking and going to properties, where we can see the three dimensional coordinates already exist, or we can go back to our home tab, use our injection location option, drag and drop it to its new location, or delete it and add a new injection location to the model. In this case, we're actually going to put the three dimensional coordinates in that we want for this particular model. We're going to specify the x direction to be minus 220.338, the y to be 174.84, and the z to be minus 226.992. When you have those numbers entered in, simply press apply. Notice the injection location has moved to its new location and select close. We can now set up and run the analysis. From the tasks tab, make sure that the molding window appears next to the analysis wizard. In this case, right here inside of the study tasks view, you'll notice that the molding window analysis does in fact appear right here as part of our analysis selection. With all of this already defined, we simply can double click on Start Analysis to evaluate our current molding window inside of the software. Again, watch the progress bar to determine how far along we are in the existing analysis. With the analysis complete, again take a look at your General tab as well as your Molding Window tab from your Summary window. Evaluate the zone plot to find out how changing the injection location has now impacted not only the optimal point, but also the overall size of the window. Do this by investigating the size of the window, again either by querying on specific locations, or simply dragging the window around and watching the updates take place. For an even more in-depth analysis, we may want to consider even more gating options on this particular model. In this case, let's take our existing model and duplicate it one more time. And let's rename this study so that it reflects our new design. In this case, we'll call our study Saw Housing MW Two Gates. Select the study and open it up inside of your view screen. Use your navigation bar to rotate to the back side of the model and let's add a second injection location at the bottom rib. In this case, we can either use the Home tab and select Injection Locations, or double-click on the Injection Locations from the Study Tasks pane. In this case, I'll double-click in the Study Tasks pane and select a secondary gate location on the bottom rib structure. Because we do have a specific location that we would like to put the gate, simply right-click on the gate so that it is the current highlighted gate, and notice the three-dimensional coordinates that now appear. If you have the wrong gate, you'll notice that the coordinates will reflect the existing gate location that we just specified. Make sure that the gate you want to modify is highlighted in pink by selecting on it. With the appropriate gate highlighted, change your values to reflect the existing location. Set your X to 30.807. Set your Y to 
to 174.84 and set your z to minus 274.8 excuse me 984 and press apply you'll notice that the gate location updates on the screen select close and you're now ready to launch your analysis Again, select your Tasks tab and verify that the molding window analysis has been selected inside of the Advisor window. In order to launch your analysis, again, simply double-click on the Start Analysis icon at the bottom of the Study Tasks window. Project pane can again be shown at the very bottom left corner, and your progress can be seen as it progresses. With the analysis again complete, we can now take a look at our General and Molding Window tabs with the Summary window, we can also take a look at our zone plot and very quickly do comparisons between our existing models as well as our new model with multiple gates. Again, checking the extremities of our molding window to find out our available processing conditions, determining our optimal point, and doing any querying we may want to do with the results advisor. Remember, of course, that windows can always be tiled vertically and horizontally to do comparisons and make a very visual comparison between different studies. For best comparison, make sure that the cut through plan on all three windows are set the same and try to set the temperatures as close as possible. This will give the most apples to apples comparison between the molding window analyses or simply compare optimal points on all three. Remember, running a filling analysis based on these conditions will show any potential weld lines, pressure issues, temperature variations, and shear dependence that may take place as part of the injection molding process. Now that you've had the opportunity to watch this presentation, as well as the short demo video, feel free to try these exercises to practice your skills. For additional information on how to access them, please refer to the introduction presentation. Thank you.